Okay, so we're starting off the Battle of Pea Ridge, and we got a column of Confederate units. I'm just using one column marker. In order to be in command, well, McCulloch is able to loan two points to uh, McIntosh, which actually he can use his command points. That, that, it doesn't really affect this, but in terms of rallying and stuff like that. Um, just before I started playing this, and we're just seeing some troops marching on the board, but I started thinking, you know, maps don't really give me the sense in the same way. When I walk into just about any fairly vacant terrain, though, um, not an urban landscape, but if I'm in fields, meadows, whatever, I almost immediately start picturing how to capture or defend certain terrain salient features uh, in a Civil War era. I don't know why this is. Uh, it's not uh, It's not like I've been terribly exclusive in thinking about Civil War, uh, but and, and I, I don't think that's always been my favorite era, but uh, thinking in terms of infantry, artillery, but not so much cavalry, uh, taking positions and trenching at a light level, early Civil War, it, it's it's a very odd feeling to me, and I, I don't get this off of looking at a map ever. Just thought I'd mention it for whatever reason. Anyway, the Union turn comes second. There's not a lot here. He's got one little unit. Uh, I'm not sure what he can do with it and what he thinks he can do with it. Personally, I think he's going to try to find some kind of a safe place for him. Okay, well, that's the end of two turns, and we've got... Uh, McCulloch's forces pulling in Pike in the background here. Now Van Dorn starts coming in next turn, and for him, uh, our 24th Missouri's moved up to this ridge line. There's a slight defensive advantage to that. There's the, the woods. I'm hoping to kind of slow them down a little bit while more troops come in. It's not, uh, you know, force them to deploy and not just march in column. Meanwhile, Busey's Cav is running up here. Now you can see these are... Uh, these have no morale associated with them. They have a question mark. They're going to have to roll and see how good they are. Uh, they're recently conscripted green units, even though they're cav and they're armed with uh, cult repeaters. Well, not these guys there with pistols. Um, one thing to note with this particular game, as opposed to, I think, the rest of the series, is this one allows, when you're marching in column, to have guns interspersed inside your, your infantry units. You're allowed to have one gun battery in every stack that's moving in column. That's uh, a little different from most of these, and I actually like it better. I, I don't think that the guns uh, should take up a whole hex in the way they often do in a column. On the other hand, uh, like with the gamers games, you kind of feel like the infantry may be traveling a little too densely. Uh, those big infantry units probably should take up more than one hex. I, it feels to me like four, four strength points per hex would probably be right for uh, traveling on road column. But, you know, uh, there's a cost to uh, deploying out of column and into line. You can kind of abstract that and say, hey, it's, it's fine the way it is. All right. Uh, on to turn three, and we're beginning to see stuff showing up. The calf's going to deploy itself on the round top and try to dominate the road here. That'll help protect Lee Town uh, and slow the Confederates down, we hope. This one, similarly, up on the ridge line, trying to slow down Confederate troops because we know we've got a long time to come before we have troop parity on the board. Okay, Confederate side of the uh, 10 a.m. turn. And we've got that big column coming in. It hasn't started deploying yet. Now, Van Dorn has more of a problem, and he's had to deploy a couple of units into line because there's this infantry standing in his way on the ridge. Uh, rest of his force is in column. Now, those lead units, blood's already been shed. The 24th Missouri fired. It got a six. Lucky shot. Hits one of those. Got that, of course, recorded underneath as you do. I also had to record it up here. A little mark, and yeah, I know there's other markings on here. But, here's the thing. This is a question mark unit, which means we get to play on the scene the elephant's table. And we roll a couple of dice and see what kind of morale this thing has. And it's got a seven. It's got three morale. 
which we got to put into place somewhere. That's this unit. And now it makes its regular morale check and it passes it just fine. All right, well now they get to fire back. Now they're not in good shape here. Uh, oops, that's a four. They're at half because we deal with, uh, remember only four strength points can fire out of any hex anyway, so they're not hurt there. But they're smoothbore muskets firing at two hexes. Uh, you can see the shotgun's kind of nice, but we got one of them kicking around down under here. Uh, I don't know how many there are. Anyway, we're going to be firing on the two table, but we got a couple of shifts against us. One for the light woods here, and we can trace through one hex of that. And then I believe the crest also provides uh, a shift in favor of the defender. So that's two shifts against. We're going to be rolling on the crappy table, but that's okay. We might get a pin to route. We don't. It's not low enough for uh, an ammo check. All right, well, that's all we got. Um, this is when rally would happen. There isn't an issue with that. So we move on to the Union uh, turn. Now as we move to the 1030 turn, and you'll notice something. The scale's a little different here. The last one was 20 minutes turns. This is 30 minute turns. Maybe the hexes are a little bigger here. Uh, I'm not sure. They kind of fudge with things a little bit in each of these. And that, that's one of the big differences, I think, between what you see with the gamers, where they're very strict about sticking with uh, largely the same roles. There are sometimes differences. Anyway, what we have is uh, the Union Bowen has dismounted his cavalry, and he's got his artillery in there. Remember, the cav don't get a bonus for lying down in this uh, scenario, in this uh, system. Um, we also have a new force coming in under Dodge. This is a detached unit, and he's moving down to try and intercept Van Dorn. Uh, this unit, which is trying to slow things down, well, we got a stalemate there. Nothing, nothing happened. Some bullets flew by, but uh, until Van Dorn can deploy enough units to chase them out of there, which is this next turn of his, uh, it's going to be tough to get him moving. And even if he attacks, he's got small, well, not small, but he's got small gunfire. So he's almost got to charge in. And remember, there are penalties. Uh, to doing that, you have to have the Confederate leader uh, associated to actually instigate a, uh, a, uh, a melee. And if you're doing it from two hexes, well, one of the units may not go in at all. So it kind of makes things trickier. All right. Oh, hell, you know what? I got some James rifles. That's the art, uh, artillery up here. I can get a uh, shot on those columns. I might as well do that. And that'll show you a little bit there. Albert A under BUC is going to fire. Now we have to take care of the ammo here. We had to take care of ammo in the other game. I used counters for it. Um, now here's where it gets tough because I'm doing it one handed. But I mark one off. I've got three guns at long range. Uh, the multiplier is one. If you look at the uh, the chart for the TB out at range 9. Now, these have good range. Uh, well, those are howitzers out there. These are the best range guns I have, which is one of the reasons I'm doing it. Now, one isn't so hot, right? Because I'm using the grape shot table, even though there's no way in hell I'm using grape shot at that range. But I get a column shift in my favor due to These guys are enfiladed because they're in column. So, I got some chance of doing some damage. I don't, I get a pin result. I was gonna shoot at this guy, so I'll make a quick morale check on him, and he's fine. But, you know, it could have slowed things up. It could have caused some problems. It could have caused a casualty. I don't think these guys are gonna last very long, so I wanna get as many shots off with that artillery as I can. So my mind was on some of the lighting comments because I thought this would show up a lot better with the uh, the different map, but I, I, I see what was meant in them. It, you know, what the fault is, is these damn uh, fluorescent bulbs that last longer. They just don't light. Uh, I'm not getting anything like natural lighting, and uh, actually, I don't, know, I don't know why I have these, but <laughs> I have a lot of them, so they're kind of what I'm stuck with. Uh, 
During the daytime, it'll look better. Anyway, you can see I had an oops while I was thinking about that and messed up my counter track, so I've got to uh, figure out the turn record track again. Mm. Okay, I'm in the middle of the Confederate turn. The advance is moving forward. These units in column are being screened by uh, line units. This is just out of range of those Colt repeaters. I didn't do that uh, on purpose or anything. Um, it's just how it ended up. But I did pull the artillery and make sure that they weren't within range of that uh, rifled cannon because that would have been a possible problem. Now here's the thing. These suckers here I, I misfired but I could have been firing on artillery so it was okay. Uh, I charged the gunshot. I, I charged the ammo anyhow. But um, because of that light woods they took a line of sight penalty uh, a one shift against them. Firing through one hex of light woods or into light woods gives you a shift penalty. Over here we had fire going back and forth. Nothing happened. Neither side could shoot. Now we're going to have uh, an attempt to charge into combat. I've got to try to get these suckers out of the way. They're rifle armed, so they're potent. Now, it's automatic because I've got a leader there. My combat rating is four versus four, which is even, plus one for little, minus one for the ridge. I'm on the even table on there, which means I roll on the zero table. But I've got to try to get those guns pinned in one way or another. And I roll a quick die six. The attacker takes a casualty captured and is going to have to retreat two hexes. And the way we mark that, well, first of all, we have to check the leader casualty table. And in this game, there's enhanced casualties, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm going to have to look this up because I know that there's an enhanced casualty uh, chance on here. And I don't remember what it is. I'll be back after I do that. But basically, I'll be rolling on here to see if that capture causes a casualty. Normally, it would be a 2 to 4, but I think there's an additional chance. And then we'll see where the uh, Confederates have to retreat to. Okay, so bad news on that casualty table. Uh, little was captured, and that's marked by him having a circle around him. And I also marked uh, the casualty there is captured. The unit withdrew, failed its morale check, and only had a two morale it turned out. So it routes back. Now I gotta figure out, and this is what's new to this uh, design, is I've got a brigade commander replacement. I gotta roll how many turns does he come back? Now what's the modifier? Subtract the command rating of the divisional commander. The divisional commander has a two command rating. So that helps. I get a three. He's going to come back in three turns. <laughs> yeah, it's that painful. One, two, three. We're going to get him there. And from then on, and for the rest of this period, Little's command is not in command. He can't do a lot. Uh, I think he's at half movement, and he can't melee, and I don't think he can do offensive fire. Uh, that's the lead unit here for Van Dorn. So he's just gotten slowed down by that melee attack pretty heavily. All right, well, the Union's doing its job. We'll probably be able to pull these guys up to the ridge if we're not careful. On to their turn. And now we pull into the 11 a.m. turn. Union beginning to bring what Osterhaus and uh, Grusel into play. Got a lot of Germans here. This is Siegel's doing largely. Siegel recruited a lot of the Missouri, St. Louis, uh, and Midwestern German uh, Northerners into the cause. They were much more anti-slavery than other Missouriites. Uh, we got Dodge making his way here. Cav shooting out as far as it can. Want to get down here. It's going to be tough. We can see that one routed unit had to route, retreat again. It couldn't rally because it doesn't have a leader in range. But it was right next to Van Dorn, but he's got to stack with it to have an effect. A leader has to stack with a unit if it's not its direct commander, and that's kind of a problem here. Uh, the firepower, well, the Confederates fired from their non-column unit. Uh, a couple of shifts against that didn't do anything. And the Union fired back at the units in column, trying to damage them, failed as well. I think got a, the Confederates had to make a, an ammo check, but no effect there. All right.
uh, I'm going to wrap this one up and send it. This is uh, up to 11 a.m.